The robot race heats up as Figure raises $675 million from people like Jeff Bezos, NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Amazon. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. AI is, of course, not something that just exists in two dimensions on our screens, in our ChatGPT apps. No, one of the big prizes in AI is, of course, AI in the context of humanoid robots. There are a ton of efforts in this space right now, obviously. Big companies like Tesla are some of the leaders. And there is a strong sense that in the same way that the foundation model game is a massive market opportunity, so too is the humanoid robot space. Well, one of the hot companies in that space is called Figure. News broke today that the company is raising $675 million at a $2 billion pre-money valuation. Now, this has not been confirmed by Figure, but is being reported by Bloomberg, and they have lots of details. Perhaps most notably among the details is who's getting involved. In addition to VCs and corporate investments from Intel, Samsung, Parkway Venture Capital, Align Ventures, the company is also reportedly getting $100 million from Jeff Bezos, $95 million from Microsoft, and $50 million each from NVIDIA and Amazon. Bloomberg first reported this funding round back in January, and it appears that the interest of companies like Microsoft and OpenAI helped bring these other big actors to the table. Now, those reports say that the deal is very close to done, that wiring could actually happen today. But in the meantime, while we haven't gotten confirmation of that, Figure CEO Brett Adcock did share video of the Figure 01 robot completing a number of real-world tasks. He writes, This is end-to-end -end autonomous. We have made advances in our autonomous navigation, learned perception models, manipulation robust to pose variation, and generalizable systems for future applications. The video puts the speed-to-human ratio as 16.7% as in the figure 01 is around 17% as fast as a human at completing these tasks. Robotics is, of course, a very divisive area of this space. Take, for example, this tweet from More Perfect Union, which writes, Jeff Bezos made billions and billions exploiting low-wage workers. Now he's using some of his hoarded wealth to fund AI robots aimed at eliminating human labor. Others are more focused on the horse race comparison between figure and Tesla's Optimus. Then again, there are others, and this might explain the massive venture round, who think that while as fun as those comparisons might be, this is far from a winner-take-all market. Right, Sophia and Malik, who is notably a small investor in figure, this is going to be one of the largest tech companies of the 2030s. The total addressable market for humanoid robots is basically all of Earth. According to Vinod Khosla, we'll see 1 billion bipedal robots by 2040. C-3PO, eat your heart out. Now, moving on to last week's big story, Google DeepMind's Demis Hassabis was at the Mobile World Congress today and discussed the controversy around Gemini's historical images, which were often inaccurate to reflect a bias towards diversity, even in situations where there was none. Said Hassabis, we've taken the feature offline while we fix that. We're hoping to have that back online very shortly in the next couple of weeks, few weeks. Now, this is not a small controversy. In addition to it being loud on Twitter, Alphabet shares were also down 3.5% today. That was actually the single biggest drag on the S&P 500. There is buzz that the upset goes even farther. Brian Romley tweeted earlier today, I just got off the phone with a Wall Street firm that has been politically neutral, and they just added themselves to a lawsuit that is being passed around against Alphabet Google on the release of Gemini. The amount they are asking for class members is massive. But what is the basis? They are big shareholders, and this is an obvious flawed product. They feel they have the right to sue and remove the board of directors for not removing management that allowed a flawed product to be released. We will see. Now, speaking of the market, the conversation that we may be in an AI bubble is kind of growing a little bit. Bloomberg, for example, points to Kathy Wood and ARK selling more NVIDIA as well as cutting their TSMC stake. Bloomberg writes, Kathy Wood sold shares of Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corp for the first time in more than two years, adding to moves to cut exposure in the chipmaker's key customer, NVIDIA Corp. Wood is trimming her holdings in the global chip bellwethers as the artificial intelligence frenzy intensifies. Wood was one of the most prominent voices predicting AI would be a game changer. Despite that, she sold NVIDIA shares throughout last year, betting on growth potential in less talked about software companies such as UiPath Inc. and Twilio Inc. Now, one thing that's worth noting whenever you see any Kathy Wood headlines is that different ARC funds have different rules about how much of the fund any one stock can make up. And so you always have to ask, and I'm not sure if this is the case when it comes to NVIDIA, are these reflections of those rules and overall portfolio balancing issues versus what they're being presented as, which is getting out ahead of a bubble popping. Now, whether the market thinks it's a bubble or not, one area that continues to be white hot is the talent battle. A leader of Google's video generation efforts has now joined TikTok owner ByteDance as the introduction of Sora has definitely churned up more intensity around AI video efforts. 
Now, obviously, this type of lateral company movement is nothing surprising or different, but I am certainly watching to see whether Sora specifically has an impact on other company behavior as it has on consumer perception. Lastly, one more update on a story we've been following for a while now, that Biden robocall in New Hampshire that kicked up so much dust in D.C. That was, of course, a deep fake of Biden saying that Democrats shouldn't go out and vote and they should save their vote till November. Well, now we've learned who was behind it, writes Axios. A former political consultant for President Biden's longshot Democratic primary challenger, Representative Dean Phillips, said Sunday he commissioned an AI-generated robocall impersonating the president. The consultant was named Steve Kramer, and Axios said that the statement he first shared with NBC News, quote, showed no sign of remorse about the deepfake, and instead said it was a wake-up call for regulation. Kramer said, with a mere $500 investment, anyone could replicate my intentional call. Immediate action is needed across all regulatory bodies and platforms. Even individuals acting alone can quickly and easily use AI for misleading and disruptive purposes. Seems a little unlikely to me that his purpose was actually a big act of political awareness raising. But then again, what do I know? However, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.